Here's for food and water, wondering what took so long. Slow, slow. Everything is slow. The man who runs the county, Judge Carl Griffith, agrees. And in a meeting with President Bush this morning, said FEMA's delivery of relief supplies was unacceptably slow. To save American lives, we must be able to act fast. To real distrust of the federal government, especially with the levy system, because now the Army Corps has pushed that date back now to 2011. It was supposed to be up by 2010. As requests for emergency assistance poured in after Hurricane Katrina, one applicant listed this as his address, the Greenwood Cemetery in New Orleans. FEMA promptly issued a check for $2,358 for rental assistance. That's just one of thousands of examples of alleged fraud and abuse described in a new report by the investigative arm of Congress, cost to taxpayers about $1 billion. The examples are so egregious that what they tell us is that FEMA didn't perform even basic checks to safeguard taxpayers' money. Well, today the outrage spread to Congress where House members accused FEMA of a cover-up. Two years after Katrina, 76,000 FEMA trailers are still being used to house families who lost their homes. Many of the trailers have high levels of formaldehyde, which can result in dangerous respiratory problems. Three of my children began having severe nosebleeds several times a week. Uh, it got so bad that this past Tuesday I actually had to go to the emergency room. Several deaths may well be linked to toxic levels of formaldehyde gas. It is a sick organization. Uh, and it has totally lost the confidence of the people of America. Overnight, FEMA decided to stop issuing debit cards at Houston shelters, but almost no one there hoping for a card had any idea. Pile everybody up in the van and come up here and we can't even get what they said we was going to get. Even Houston's relief coordinators told FEMA a heads up would have been helpful. We just were made sure everyone understood that every time they change their mind in Washington, D.C., it affects people here that are trying to deal with tens of thousands of people. We're talking about damage from Hurricane Rita last year, two devastated schools and kids and parents waiting for help. A few months ago, the folks at FEMA told the schools, one in Iberia Parish and one in Vermilion Parish in Louisiana, that they would get millions to relocate to higher ground. FEMA even helped them draw up the plan. And then FEMA took it back. Endless delays, he says, caused by FEMA, which just last week delayed money for rebuilding yet again. They're more worried about their own positions in FEMA, their own salaries, than, than the recovery process down here. There is a new hitch to report about those infamous FEMA trailers. After spending nearly $3 billion taxpayer dollars to buy them, it turned out many went unused, and now FEMA is unloading them at bargain basement prices while other people need them. After a lengthy investigation, the congressional architects of the Department of Homeland Security concluded today that FEMA, the agency that is supposed to respond to hurricanes and national disasters, should be taken out of the mammoth Homeland Security bureaucracy disbanded and put back together in a better way and placed under direct control of the president during emergencies. A Senate report on the government's response to Hurricane Katrina says FEMA is so far beyond repair that the agency should be scrapped. It said that agency failed in its view to anticipate and then respond to Katrina. FEMA is discredited, demoralized, and dysfunctional. FEMA is discredited, demoralized and dysfunctional. In the mid-1970s, the discredited federal government was more scared of the public than ever, coming off the years of Richard Nixon. And so two cold warriors inside the White House of Gerald Ford uh, begin to bring back some of the Cold War ideas of an executive takeover uh, of the United States through a uh, emergency federal agency. And those individuals were Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney. And so really what we see being set up by Jimmy Carter in 1979 is just a continuation of federal policy to expand uh, a federal takeover plan for continuity of government. And so that's what the Federal Emergency Management Agency uh, was really set up for.
Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? One of the programs that got exposed during Iran-Contra was Rex 84. And Congressman Jack Brooks, in those hearings, brought up the fact that, uh, in reality, FEMA was a cover for a huge continuity of government program in case the American people ever rebelled. And that was the architecture or the blueprint uh, for the illegitimate shadow government to fully take over the functions of the entire federal government, suspend the Constitution, suspend the Bill of Rights, and arrest whoever they wanted to. And uh, FEMA was going to uh, control the camps that the people were going to be put into. And FEMA would be the main governmental institution uh, with different directors over every agency. And now when you watch FEMA on television, it's always a colonel or a general or an admiral in uniform who's over the different departments. The martial law portions of Rex 84 were outlined in a 1982 memo written by FEMA Deputy John Brinkerhoff. Martial law was to be declared in the event of a national crisis, yet the plan did not define the term national crisis. The plan allowed FEMA to take control of both federal and state governments, appointing military commanders to replace duly elected officials. The plan also called for the rounding up of at least 21 million American Negroes for delivery to numerous military bases converted into prison centers, also known as FEMA relocation camps. Why? Because at that time, African Americans were classified as one of the largest threats to the continuity of the federal government. Who does the federal government consider the biggest threat these days? The convergence of globalization and technology has created a new brand of terrorism. There were persons who, for whatever reason, came to view their home country as the enemy. The kind of right-wing, religious-based domestic terrorism. Disturbing news tonight about homegrown terror. Part of this is a big change in the White House, a new cultural experience, and some of the crazies are coming out of their closet. Right now, it looks like there is no connection between the men arrested and any known terrorist cell. Homegrown. Uh, yeah, homegrown, I should say. Uh, folks, we've got a very serious situation here. I'm holding what is called the right-wing extremism, current economic and political climate, fueling resurgence and radicalization and recruitment. And in it, we talked about the fact that they define pro-lifers as domestic terrorists. They put this in a Department of Homeland Security uh, document, this official assessment, now saying pro-lifers people that believe in end-time prophecies, people that uh, are opposed to the administration's position on immigration, uh, those of us that are standing up for the sanctity of life and for the sanctity of marriage, all of those are now potential, and this is what they're saying, domestic terrorists. It's a terrorist next door that could be our bigger threat. They call people who believe in the sanctity of life, who believe in owning firearms, who believe in serving their country in the military and coming back, who are very concerned about the policies that this nation is embarking on, spending too much money, taxing too much. It's all listed right here. These are the domestic right-wing extremists. One million names under the watchful eye of the United States. America's so-called terrorist watch list has hit the net record number, according to one of the country's most prominent civil liberties groups. That's a lot of people to keep track of. They're adding new people all the time. It's a secret list that you don't know really quite how one gets on, and you don't know how you get off. coming out and profiling huge groups of people, you know, if you voted for a certain political candidate, you should be considered a potential threat. And you couple that with things like the Patriot Act, where if you are a threat in their eyes, you can be held without access to judge, jury, and, and without access to a lawyer or even to your family. That's very concerning because we, we've watched our country go through and do this to brown people, you know, overseas. They're rounding up enemy combatants and they're putting them in camps and they are torturing.